Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today is my maintenance day on my tanks, and so today I'm going to be sort of doing a bunch of work on all the tanks, um, I've sort of been slacking off uh, on my water changes and things like that, which I mean it's totally fine uh, when I have tanks set up like I do, uh, like with this tank, I've left it for like almost four weeks now without a water change, which is something I've never really done, and it's completely totally fine, the fish are super healthy, the whole tank is doing super well, but it is starting to get to that raggedy point. So we are going to be doing a big maintenance session just focusing on the 36 gallon today. We're going to clean things up, trim back all these plants, deal with all this stuff right here. But that will be coming in a second. Before we get into that, um, I am going to be doing the work on all these other setups um, off camera. But I want to show you guys a couple of things that are going on. I uh, don't know if you guys can see in here one of the problems with this pond setup, which is doing super well right now for my uh, black leopard guppies, is that you just really can't see them at all. So I'm thinking... In, I might get relocate these guys. I've got a big project coming up that uh, I can probably move these guys into. Uh, it's gonna be crazy. Something really fun that I've always wanted to do. My Patreon members, who I appreciate so much, thank you guys to everybody who's on over there supporting me on Patreon. Um, you guys help out a ton. But they already know what's coming, and um, I'm considering moving these guys over there. But that's just sort of uh, we're still working on that. That's a big, big project. But these guys are breeding up a storm in here. I've probably doubled their numbers at least at this point and again you guys are not gonna be able to see this at all that's one of the problems with this setup it's super good for them they're super healthy and it looks super natural and i think i think it looks really good it works for them so well the babies are able to hide it just it simulates a natural environment super super well just run off an air stone that's all that's in here just an air stone and all these plants but there's a ton of babies in here which i won't be able to show you guys but yeah so this tank is Oh, this pond is doing really well. Sparkling Gouramis, also doing well. I noticed that the Red Willy Shrimp that I have in here are still in there. I never see them, but I saw a couple of them the other day, so that's cool. This glass needs a bit cleaning, a bit of cleaning. See, there's some water marks here. These guys are all doing super well. Need to hack back this guppy grass again. But tank's doing really well. Just want to show you guys a new betta. Look at him. Awesome fish right here. Super personable already. And, I mean, he's looking really good. Again, planning on rescaping this tank, but look at him. He wants food. Wants food so bad right now. He's such a pretty looking better. Really love this guy. 55-gallon cave tank. Nothing new, nothing crazy. Blind cave tetras are awesome. Such a fun tank to watch. They're always moving. Super active. They have put on a good bit of size right here. Haven't really shown this tank. They're, just, they're impossible to film, though. <laughs> but, I mean, because they're just so fast. But they've put on... A good bit of size. They're starting to get bigger, and I think that's great. Tanks come along just fine. Uh, I've had a little bit of diatoms. So I'll be doing water change on this tank today, also. And finally, just want to talk about our new um, Emerald Rasboras. These guys are all hanging out right here. Still very skittish. Don't like it when I get close to the tank, but they're doing super well. They're looking really good. They're colored up nicely, so they're all looking awesome in this tank. A little wabakusa bowl doing well also but let's get to the main point of this video which is doing a big maintenance session that is sort of long overdue on the 36 gallons so a lot of stuff that's happened recently we'll just go over what i need to do um i've had a lot of die off from the crypts in this corner right here uh you can see some of these leaves they're like sort of melting away uh right here you see all this which is really unfortunate so i'm gonna pull all these out um and fill in this gap probably with some anubius which i have uh, stored in my plant storage tank down here. I've got quite a bit down here uh, and some in here in my quarantine tank all from my old 20 gallon longscape uh, which is now the hillstream tank. Um, so probably fill in that gap with some Anubius, add some of those in there. Kind of fill in this empty space right here um, and then really hack back all these stem plants. That's what they need. They need a good trim back and replant. This, this moss needs to be trimmed as well. As you can see it's just grown way too big uh, so I'm gonna hack this back and then reattach it all along this log down here because there's no moss down there and there's some cyanobacteria growing on the log this is the only place where I get any cyanobacteria just right on that piece uh, so I'm gonna cut off some of this moss and replant it or reattach it to the bottom of this log right here so hopefully that'll solve that cyanobacteria problem and we'll sort of clean up this messy moss look but this Christmas moss is looking really good again trim up some of these stem plants get all that fixed um, just clean up all around just clean up the base of this tank it's getting a little bit grimy down here just from again like four weeks 
without a water change. And uh, again, this tank's super healthy. Everything's doing really well, but it just needs a little bit of work. Big hack back, get this thing all cleaned up, uh, expose a little more light for these crypts in the foreground, um, and do all that. So let's get right to it. We're going to start with a big plant trimming. So we're going to get all this started by trimming this Rotala and Limnophila. So it's super healthy in this tank, it's grown really well, and I've just sort of let it go a little bit too far. So we're just going to hack back all these stems, clear up the foreground so we can see things a little bit better. now there's like a lot of more light coming through but there's a lot of ugly pieces of like stems that I trimmed off here so I'm just gonna go in and actually just tr pull these guys out and throw them away uh, and then replant some stuff in their place that looks a lot better Boy, that's a big change, isn't it? I mean, check out, you can actually still see the, there's still a tiger lotus hidden in there. It's not looking the best, but it's still alive even after having like no light. <laughs> so it was a hard decision for me to pull out all those stem plants, but they've been in there for too long. They need to be replanted. And I mean, this is all the good plants we can replant or transfer to a different tank. This is all the stuff I tore out that I'm not gonna use again. It's pretty much just a bunch of uh, bad looking stems. So that's all. But as you can see, the crypts have suffered a little bit. Um, there's a lot of uh, dead leaves in here that I need to go through and pick out. Um, but, and as you can also see, look at all that cyanobacteria right there. <laughs> Confined to that one little spot. So I'm going to clean that up when we do our water change. Fill in this gap with the moss. Uh, get some stem plants just peeking up over there. Um, and I really like how it sort of opened up this Anubia so we can see now. But that's pretty cool. You know, tank doesn't look the best right now. But once we get this thing all cleaned up, I'm considering pulling out this clump again too and just replanting it as well uh, just to freshen things up but uh, it might not be looking the best right now but I have a vision I think it's gonna look pretty good when we're done all right so now the tank is pretty much destroyed it's time to get in there with our small siphon and start clearing out all this mulm that I've kicked up and just this is stuff that just sells between the planted stuff all these wilted crypt leaves that have sort of been melting back, I'll clean those all up. Get this whole thing freshened up, it's going to look really good, that's going to change a lot. We'll suck up all the cyanobacteria, get that all out of here, fix this moss problem, get this all along the length of the wood, replant some stem plants, add some new anubius clumps in here, really freshen up this whole scape, and I think after we're done, it's going to be night and day. So the thing with cyanobacteria like this, you can sort of just use the end of your tube, kind of scrape it off the wood. If it's just on the wood like it is here, sort of scrape it off and then just siphon it right up. And it's really no big problem or big deal and it works out a lot better. Kind of weird that even though I've got plecos rasping this wood pretty much 24-7, that's why you can see how like white it is, um, <laughs> they have not rasped off the cyanobacteria even on accident. but. I constantly get cyanobacteria just on this one piece of wood, maybe because it's so, uh, it's like directly underneath the light with no moss to cover it, so we'll be fixing that in a second. Now that I've got all this cyanobacteria removed, we will add some moss to it and hopefully solve this problem for good. gonna put a ton of debris in the water but I'm just gonna pull this out set this down and I'm thinking I'll trim it off the front a little bit too just because it's getting a little little bit unruly here it needs uh, needs to be contained a little bit or at least managed actually what I'm thinking I think I might just pull out this whole clump right here give it a good rinse get all the mulm out of it and then reattach it to the stick. It'll be really easy, really quick, and that'll make things nice and easy for uh, re-adding it. It's going to clean things up, 
um, and I've been meaning to do that for a while anyway. Now, before we go any further, let's do a big water change. Alright, so now I'm just going to add some of this moss back onto the top of the wood. And I don't want it to look too barren, and I've got a ton of moss. So I'm going to be pretty generous with this. Just going to put some super glue onto the location. Try not to overdo it, because we don't want to see that ugly white glue. And then stick the patch on there and continue that till we fill out this whole area. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they're attaching moss is they always put too much glue down. Um, and of course you don't have to use glue, but it is my favorite method. It's very quick, uh, easy, you don't have to see any thread. And if you do it right, it's pretty much invisible. You can't see how you got the moss attached. So I really like that, but just make sure you don't overdo it with the glue, it's super easy to overdo it, and you really hardly need any, um, and eventually uh, the moss is just going to attach itself anyway, so take it easy with the glue, that's my uh, best suggestion for anyone attaching uh, moss to their wood with glue. So you can actually attach moss with glue uh, underwater, you just have to be pretty quick about it, it's not actually that difficult, just do the normal thing you'd be doing uh, out of water put a little dab but this time on the actual piece of moss and then be relatively quick about it and just get your moss under there and stick it onto the wood and it'll stay it's very likely to stick to your fingers with this method that's my least favorite part about doing it underwater but it actually works out just fine Alright, the moss is taken care of, but we still have a lot to do. We gotta clean the glass, to deal with the uh, calcium buildup right here. We have to replant all the stem plants, and of course still fill it back up with water. And I'm sure there's a couple other things we still need to do that I'm forgetting. So, uh, definitely not over yet, but things are coming along, and I'm really excited to see how this tank looks when we're done. Alright everybody, so here we are, this is where the tank's at right now, and it's really surprising, like without, without that whole stem plant wall to block everything, it's almost like a whole new tank, and it's really kind of refreshed the look on the scape without really doing anything big to it, so I'd love to hear what you guys think about it, whether or not you liked it before or after, I mean of course I replanted the stem plants, so um, 
this rotala right here and that limnophila it's gonna grow back it's gonna fill the whole space in again and if i let it go again which i probably will um it will probably just go back to where it was which i was fine with but it's nice to see a nice fresh clean look on this tank and it really brings it back to almost like when i first set it up uh just sort of all these plants recently planted almost looks like it really makes the tank look almost new again which is pretty cool gives a new look to an old tank because again this tank's been running for over a year now and it really freshened things up but i'll just take a quick look at everything um uh the tiger lotus has not seen uh, full light for like months months and months now so i'm interested to see how that does um all the crypts uh they've got a little more light now so hopefully uh we get a little less melting um and of course the stem plants really got hacked back so i'm interested to see if we get any algae problems now there's not all that huge mass of stem plants to uh, take up nutrients or anything like that but we'll see i've just got uh, strategic pockets of limnophila right here and some rotala here i really think that the addition of the moss along the whole thing uh, along the whole length of wood trimming it down uh, and adding it into different locations was a very good idea i think it really nicely continues the flow through here and has much more of a uh, structured look to it now like this big clump of anubius and then it sort of goes through like a triangular slope right there all the way through right here and i kind of like that it has a very nice sharp triangle look uh, with this wood sort of crossing it in the front not that this is a super structured amazing aquascape or anything but it has a little bit more uh, form than it once did when it was just like a wall of plants and stuff like that the fish are behaving a little bit differently but not too crazy the sopes are actually kind of skittish um right now i mean just without all the cover they're used to they're still of course doing totally fine looking super good uh they're always looking awesome in this tank these guys were an awesome fish choice the black neons on the other hand i mean uh, i don't know if they're just not as smart as the surveys or anything but i mean it's nothing it's like nothing changed for them they're still i mean both the fish are just totally totally normal but i mean the black neons are always occupying the same space like usually they would kind of school together like this all waiting for food but now the surveys with the big water change are sort of staying in their own area black neons are staying up here so that's kind of interesting cool to see the two schools interact um as you can see he's one of our plecos hanging out on the anubius leaf he's so so bright he's almost overexposed right there but doing his job doing some work and these guys love to rasp on the wood that's their main food source in this tank and it's been suiting them really well um don't know where the other plecos are probably hiding hiding out down here just like they do but yeah hope you guys uh like the trim back of this tank i hope you guys like how it looks now uh once again it's probably not gonna look like this uh, in a couple months i'll try and uh keep it maintained uh but most likely it's gonna grow back in then we'll do another hack back it's kind of nice it's kind of a refreshing look it's almost like a brand new tank uh but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching and i'll see you next time